in the past 12 months or so, there's been an increasingly large number of automakers who have floated the idea of making SUVs and off-roaders with either a plug-in hybrid or all-electric drivetrain. And while we already do have some SUVs out there with plug-in drivetrains, like the all-electric Tesla Model X, the Volvo XC90 T8 plug-in hybrid, BMW xDrive 40e and Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrids, to name a few, it seems that we're going to see a true explosion in electric and electrified SUVs in the next year or two. Most of the vehicles mentioned above are the kind of SUVs that might have off-road capabilities, but which you'd probably not call true off-roaders due to their sticker price and target market. But in the not too distant future, we're going to see more rugged off-roaders pair up with plug-in hybrid or all-electric drivetrains to make some truly capable plug-in off-roaders. In the past few months alone, we've heard Jeep talk about making a plug-in hybrid or possibly even an electric Wrangler in the next few years. A Jaguar Land Rover is talking about the possibility of a plug-in hybrid or all-electric version of its new Defender. And of course, there's US startup Bollinger, whose B1 on off-road sport utility truck oozes the practicality and go-anywhere charm of any iconic off-roader you care to name from the last 60 years. Although each of these will have their fans, particular Bollinger, it doesn't take too long to realise that just as hardened petrol heads questioned how good an electric drivetrain would be in a sports car all those years ago, there are now hardened off-roaders who are, quite frankly, balking at the idea of owning and driving an electric off-roader. Even some commentators have openly criticised the idea of electric drivetrains on vehicles designed to go off-road, moaning that they would likely have a dead battery before even reaching the trailhead. That particular criticism is, of course, a tired cliché in today's world of rapid charging, large capacity battery packs and comprehensive infrastructure provision. But I've still had plenty of people ask me what an off-road electric vehicle would be like, and more specifically, if an off-road vehicle would be good or not if powered by electric. While my off-road experiences with electric vehicles is by no means super comprehensive, I have driven off-road several times in an electric vehicle, most noticeably the Land Rover Defender electric prototype developed and tested by Jaguar Land Rover in the UK a few years ago. Combine that with what I know of off-roading, I grew up on a dairy farm so have plenty of knowledge of what off-roaders can be used for in the farming world, and what I know about electric vehicles, and I think I could confirm that if properly designed, electric off-roaders are going to be fantastic. The first reason for this is that all of that torque available from an electric motor, rather than wrestle with a manual gearbox as you might do if you're a hardened off-roader, all that instant electric motor torque means there's no need for multiple gears. Power delivery is instant and provided you've got traction, you should find climbing any grade is actually easier in an electric vehicle than a diesel or petrol powered one. Depending on the design of the vehicle, you may find that there's a low high ratio transfer switch, which might either affect throttle response and therefore power delivery or physically change transfer box gear ratios. Either way though, it's a far more pleasant experience than wrestling with engine speed, gear selection and power bands. Second, there's the benefits of having a lower center of gravity. Assuming the vehicle is properly designed and the battery pack sits underneath the cabin floor, the heaviest part of the vehicle will be lower down than it would be for a conventional off-roader. And that means that an electric vehicle should be capable of a far higher tilt angle than an internal combustion engine counterpart. This means that there's a much lower risk of tipping your electric off-roader over when you're tackling extreme conditions and, as a bonus, should also help handling on-road when travelling fast. Because, as anyone who's spent any time in a true off-roader will tell you, they don't take corners all that well at speed. Third, there's potentially more load carrying capabilities in an electric off-roader when compared to an internal combustion engine one, as the front of the vehicle isn't taken up with massive hulking engines. Instead, it's even possible electric off-roaders in the future may actually have shorter hoods and their front wheels even closer to the front of the vehicle than conventional off-roaders, improving approach angles and thus capabilities off-road. Then there's the whole dealing with water thing. Unlike traditional off-roaders, which need breather pipes to do any sort of extreme wading, electric off-roaders don't need air to function. Granted, the battery packs do usually need to have some kind of depressurization vents, but as an illustration, the battery-powered Defender prototype I drove had a far higher wading depth than its conventional diesel-powered sibling. Back to the motors for the next point. 
It's worth remembering that not only do electric motors have more immediate power delivery than an internal combustion engine vehicle, but they also make it far easier to implement advanced wheel slip and torque vectoring technologies, meaning that you can send power to the wheel that needs it without a lot of the mechanical linkage that you'd find in a traditional off-roader. Finally, there's the whole noise pollution thing. And while that may not bother some, for hunters, wildlife fans, and those who just want to enjoy the countryside at its best, the whine of an electric motor is by far preferable to a rumbling diesel engine. You'll likely hear and see more of the natural world, startle less wildlife, and won't have ringing ears when you stop. Have I missed anything out? Do you think electric off-roaders will make for fantastic off-roading in the future, or do you prefer the rumble of an internal combustion engine? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And that's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and be sure to check out our new channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, where you'll see a little more behind the scenes stuff. And of course, if you'd like to help this channel keep going, please consider donating through Patreon or by following the Bitcoin link below. That's it. Thanks for watching and until next time, keep evolving.